Welcome, my fellow cemetery enthusiasts. Let me take you to one of my favorite cemeteries here in the Netherlands where I live. The cemetery of Westerveld, or as we say in Dutch, Begraafplaats Westerveld. The cemetery is situated near the coast, in a small town called Driehuis which is about a half an hour drive from Amsterdam. The cemetery was founded in the year 1890 and was one of the first privately owned cemeteries here in the Netherlands. The reason for this is that it has the very first crematorium that was ever built in the Netherlands. The crematorium was initiated in 1913 and the first cremation was held in 1914. From the very beginning, the cemetery has been open to people of all religions, which was especially remarkable for back then in the late 1800s, when cemeteries were mostly exclusive for just one particular religion. A doctor named C. J. Bailand was the first person who was cremated here at Westerveld. He was a founding member of a private organization whose purpose it was to introduce cremation in the Netherlands. When the crematorium was finished in September of 1913, he was present at the opening. A news article states the following. Facing the crematory oven, Dr. Weiland mentioned how pleased he was to be able to witness this place with his own eyes where he himself hoped to be cremated one day in his very own country of birth. Dr. Weiland's wish came true when he died the following year, in 1914, at the age of 95, and was indeed cremated here at Westerveld, making his the first cremation in the Netherlands ever. However, it did take until 1955 for cremation to become legal in this country. Another interesting fact is that Dr. Weiland was not the first Dutch person to be cremated. That was Dutch writer Multatuli, who died in 1878. But as the Netherlands did not have a crematorium back then, Multatuli was cremated in the city of Gotha in Germany. In 1948, the urn with his ashes was interred at a monument for Multatuli here at Westerveld Cemetery. Its inscription reads a famous quote of his, which translates to The calling of a human being is to be human. Besides being famous for having the first crematory in the Netherlands, Westerveld is also known for its gorgeous cemetery with countless monumental graves. As I explored the headstones, I soon discovered a very peculiar grave, namely that of a man named Dick Verkijk. What's special about his grave is that it doesn't have a death date on it. Now, I've seen other graves before that lacked a death date, but these were always family graves, where one family member was already buried and their spouse and children would eventually be buried as well, so their names and birthdays were on there, but not their dates of death. Dick's grave only had his own name on it, so I did some research and eventually located Dick and even conducted an interview with him. Turns out he is a Dutch retired journalist who lives in the United States at the moment, but wants to be buried here at Westerveld. When I asked him about his motivation to erect a gravestone while he's still alive, he explained Westerveld is one of the few cemeteries here that still have perpetual burial plots, whereas at most other cemeteries you will have to renew these rites after a certain number of years. As for his wish to be buried instead of cremated, he referred to the poem on his headstone, which reads 
To throw things away, I never learned. That's why I'm for burying and against being burned. This footage was shot at Westerfeld in April of last year and was originally intended for a short video for my Patreon page, which I finally launched by the way, I will put a link in the descriptions below. We ended up shooting way more footage than we needed, so I thought this would make for a great first video cemetery review. Up until now, I've done all my cemetery reviews in photo heavy blog post format which you can find on my website, of course, in dying.com. But if the saying is true that a picture is worth a thousand words, then video might be worth infinite words. Its immersive quality gives me the sense that I can really take you along on my cemetery wanderings. So I'm excited to continue doing these and I hope you enjoy this first video cemetery review. Now, perhaps this is going to sound a bit eerie and weird, but of all the cemeteries I've visited here in the Netherlands, Westerveld is the one where I feel most at home. The way the landscape here is shaped, with its slight hills that are always covered in a green carpet of soft moss, the diversity in trees and plants, and the beautiful variety of distinguished grave monuments, I just feel a sense of belonging here. That's why I've decided this will be the cemetery where I will be buried myself as well one day. Perhaps in the future I will find another cemetery that will feel like it fits me even better, but if not, and for now, this is where my bones will be laid to rest. Let's have a look at some of the famous graves we can find here. One of the grave monuments that really stood out for me is this one, of Willem Sonneveld, who died in 1926. He was vice president of the Dutch East Indies, before the independence of Indonesia, and the Grand Master of the Grand Orient of the Netherlands, a Dutch Masonic Grand Lodge, hence the Masonic symbols on his grave. You can see the square and compasses engraved in gold, which is probably the most identifiable symbol of Freemasonry. In the center of the symbol you can see the all-seeing eye, and above it are two sphinxes carved in stone. I first assumed the letters W, K and S refer to Willem Sonneveld's name, but after some research I discovered they stand for Wijsheid, Kracht and Schoonheid, which is Dutch for Wisdom, Strength and Beauty, which are the three pillars of Freemasonry. Let's move on to one of the most famous graves here at Westerveld. The grave of right-wing politician Pim Fortuyn. He was a controversial figure in the Dutch political landscape, being openly gay and very critical of the Muslim culture, especially in relation to their integration into the liberal Dutch society. On May 6th of 2002, Pim Fortuyn was murdered by a left-wing environmentalist. The assassination was a big shock to everyone here in the Netherlands. Pim was born in Driehuis and was buried here, but what's special about this grave is that his remains are actually no longer here. Two months after his burial at Westerveld, his body was moved to Provesano, a village in Italy where Pim had a house. A small replica of his Italian grave monument is placed on the grave here in Westerveld. Another famous Dutch person who is buried here is writer, poet and TV personality Boudewijn Boeg, an artist with a huge imagination 
as stated in his biography by Eva Rovers. I quote, Upon his death in 2002, Dutch writer Boudewijn Boeg was revealed as a man who had misled the entire nation with his incredible life story. The man who during his life had reinvented his personal history posthumously proved how eagerly both friends and the general public had wanted to believe that his fluid fiction was the solid truth. It appears he had made up a lot of big, important facts of his life. For example, being a millionaire after inheriting a fortune from his father, and having had a son who tragically died at the age of five. After his death, it turned out all of this, as well as many other facts about Baudouin, had never happened in reality. Next, we have the famous grave of Anthony Fokker, the Dutch aviation pioneer and aircraft manufacturer. He died in New York in 1939, after a failed operation for his meningitis at the age of 49. His ashes were interred here at Westerveld Cemetery in 1940, at this monument in the shape of a seagull, a bird Anthony used to photograph a lot during his lifetime. Here is a monument I found very interesting, with the Latin inscription Laborare est orare. Um, I hope I pronounced that correctly, my Latin isn't the best. <laughs> it means to work is to pray. I could not find any background information on this particular monument, but I do like it. The saying itself may refer to the Catholic monastic practice of full devotion in the form of working and praying. We've come to the end of this tour. Thank you for joining me in exploring this beautiful cemetery. I have a lot more cemetery reviews in store for you, so do hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on those. If you want to support the work I do with A Course in Dying, you can visit my Patreon page and receive exclusive death positive merchandise and lots of behind the scenes content. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon again.